medium right. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to another Photomall review video. Um, today we're taking a deep dive in the world of rally racing with the EA Sports WRC. Thanks to the incredible folks at EA Brazil and NVIDIA Brazil for providing me a copy of the game. Now, the EA Sports WRC has always been a staple for rally gaming and with their latest installment, um, I will be doing a deep dive on every single feature of the photo mode and how to use it. Let's get to it. The first step is to get into the photo mode. The photo mode is only accessible after you complete a race via the replay mode. As soon as you hit a particular moment of the race you want to snap, you just enter photo mode, in my case here, through the square button since I'm using a PS5 controller. When you get to the photo mode, you immediately enter in an orbital camera, do yourself a favor and switch to the free cam by pressing square again. Um, another thing you will notice, it comes with both logos and the information about the track. Um, I find this quite distracting and it should be turned off straight away. Um, you can do this by pressing start and going to the last tab enabling the watermark and photo information. Okay, let's now get to the controls. Um, I think it's getting to a point in virtual photography that photo mode should follow a particular set of standards. Um, funny enough, left goes to the right and vice versa on this photo mode. Um, it's not a big issue, but when you're used to handling so many photo modes in a particular way, and you have to kind of retrain your brain <laughs> for a specific one, it's a, it's a bit of an odd one, right? Um, so the movement of the camera, I didn't feel it was as fluid as other um, racing games like Forza or the Crew Motorfest, but yeah, it's just something to, to bear in mind. It's not like um, end of the world kind of situation, but definitely something that it could have uh, been much better. A uh, few things to point it out. Uh, when you enter the edit section, you can't really move the camera unless you go back to this menu. Um, hiding the UI, as you can see here, only works for the camera, not when you're in edit menu. <sighs> you can take 90 degree shot as well, that's a big tick. Finally, the range itself is decent and will allow you to take a variety of different shots as well. Um, so once you compose your shot, we are ready to move to the edit tab. Right, so the first option is the focal depth. And this is the distance between the furthest and the nearest points which are in acceptable focus. A lower f-stop such as a 2.8 or 4 will result in a brighter image by letting more light through, um, but much shallower depth of the field um, creating a bokeh effect. In other words, the lower, the blurrier it gets. Um, focus length, also known as zoom or fov, um, this is inverted in this photo mode, so if you go to the right, it zooms in, and to the left, it zooms out. The next one is focus distance, um, this is where you set the focus of your photo. Um, moving up next, we got shutter speed and attach to vehicle, so this feature is used when you apply the motion blur. I would recommend leaving the motion blur as the last feature to tweak. Um, the higher the shutter speed, the less motion you see in your photo. I've experienced a glitch, funny enough, on this one on PC, as um, when you use this feature, some of the editing like exposure and vignettes are ignored or reset. Um, hope they fix this because it kind of makes the photo quite dark um, at times, depending on the weather conditions that you're playing on. Um, Balancing the shutter speed and aperture, um, it's a good best practice. Um, keep in mind to always have attached to vehicle on before using the uh, motion blur so it focuses on your subject. Um, another thing to point it out is as soon as you move the camera or any other edit, uh, the motion blur will reset and you have to trigger it again. Moving up next, uh, rules of thirds guide, and this is for people probably studying uh, taking photos in games. It's a good reference in terms of helping you where to place your subject, but once again, it's just it's just a reference, not really um, compulsory. Um, focus plane, this is used in combination with the focal depth. Um, the prov 
this provides you a green plane that shows you where the focus is on the photo. Um, always remember to turn it off when you're done, otherwise it will remain in your photo. And lastly, uh, bokeh shape. Um, the bokeh is basically the quality of the background blur effect. The next tab um, has a number of light edits. The first one is the photo filter. Some cool filters um, were included. I'll suggest toning the filter intensity to about 50% and tone it down to fit your photo style. Uh, my personal favorites were a bleach and low contrast. Um, the next setting is contrast. Contrast is the range of brightness from lightest to darkest in an image. A high contrast image will have very bright highlights and very dark shadows. So just tone it down as you feel pleased. Um, exposure controls the brightness of your photo. Uh, saturation controls the saturation of all colors equally. By toning it down, it will lean towards a grayscale. Film grain, um, good for dark, uh, low light conditions, especially when it's raining or cloudy um, or storm uh, kind of situations. Next one up is the CA. Um, in my opinion, it doesn't fit the rally photo style, but hey, there are always great use of this feature by other photographers, but don't hesitate on in using it, but um, I, I couldn't really find a, a use for it. And lastly, vignette. Um, I wish this could always be set to off. I don't understand why it's always at 50, um, especially when the motion blur resets or ignores the venue. Um, so hopefully something that they could fix in the next patch or so. Lucky last, um, we got, as we already know, um, where to use the logos or the watermark or information about the track, right? Um, bear in mind that you cannot control where the logo goes, so, so it's quite um, fixed. Um, I, I find it, once again, quite distracting. I, I wouldn't personally use unless you have the flexibility adjusting the size of the logo where, or where will, you want to place it. The last change, um, which in my opinion would make more sense to be part of the second tab, is the dirt. Um, and it's quite a useful um, feature, to be fair. So it, it basically adds the dirt to your car. Um, a, a few it creates an awesome effect, so definitely give it a try. Um, so that's it folks, we covered all the features as part of this photo mode. Um, the photo mode definitely adds a lot of extra playtime. Um, a few issues here and there, if they uh, are worked through, it will be a pretty solid package. Um, obviously there is always more that we probably would want and uh, to be part of um, the, the photo modes. Um, things that were amiss in my opinion were uh, weather control and time of the day. Some people might argue that yeah you can set those into um, a race condition, right? However, once you get into that race that's the condition you're gonna be playing, right? So um, from a time of the day perspective there is the season that you can control um, along with um, the time of the day, so morning, dawn, afternoon, night, etc. And you also have weather control in terms of a quite a variety of them, but once again, once you start the race, that's the condition you're gonna be playing throughout the whole entire race. Um, so that's it, if you, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and give it a like and drop a comment below uh, what things you like to see in this photo mode. And I'll see you in the next video.